was um, uh, somebody handed me a camera um, when I was about 19, uh, and everything at, at the shooting was black and white. And it occurred to me, given that life was sort of crazy and out of control, that I could okay, control behind you. Should I? Well, let me. Yeah. Let me know. That I could sort of, I could sort of leave things out of the frame, and I could therefore control my life a little more easily. And it really kind of started from there. Um, filmmaking, uh, which I know I'm, I'm a little different, I think, from some of the folks here because I don't, I'm not as much a computer person. But filmmaking is really about storytelling, and everything that we all do, whether we use film, this stuff you're going to see, which are commercials I made in Los Angeles. Uh, as a director and, and a cinematographer, um, there's a story in 30 seconds, and there always is. And everything we do, including designs and websites and everything, is about telling stories. So to some extent, I, I kind of like to think that all of us are kind of cave painters. You know, We're modern day cave painters. And we're doing the best we can to do that. And all of you um, who are perhaps thinking about this or whatever have an amazing opportunity because the equipment that's available, the possibilities you have of sharing what it is you do is virtually, um, no pun intended, limitless. Um, and it's really all about taking this equipment that we all have and figuring out what, either what stories we want to tell or what stories clients want to tell. And more and more clients want to tell stories with some kinds of imagery. Usually it's moving. Um, and because it's interesting, because think about how often you sit in front of a screen and you watch things, and as often as not, you watch things that are moving. I mean, I know we still read sometimes, but we probably would rather watch a little video or something, or some kind of moving animation or whatever, um, than actually read words. Uh, so I, you know, I really came from a a storytelling background and tried to learn to use equipment and, and started with film, 16 millimeter film, making documentaries. Um, I won some awards for those documentaries and then decided and really always wanted to, you know, I thought I wanted to be Francois Truffaut or Jean-Luc Godard or whoever those people's names are that I can't pronounce. But they were doing art films in the 60s. Um, and they were really, you know, they were, they were pushing the edges um, in those days, but they were storytellers. Again, I go back to that. And the most interesting thing that you all can do when you learn or you get certificates or learn how to use this equipment, uh, again, is to figure out how to use it, how to tell something, how to make a message, how to, how to use the equipment to get across a message. Uh, and people will pay you to do that. And it's amazing, um, depending on various markets, how much people will pay you to do that and how interesting it is. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to start in this town back east called Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and work in the public television station where there was a guy who did children's shows called Mr. Rogers. Uh, I don't know if any of you, you're all probably too young to know Mr. Rogers. Um, but at any rate, um, I was lucky enough to work with Fred, and, and he was an amazing man. Uh, and he allowed people like me, and I was probably right around your age, to go out and make these little documentaries that would be on his show. And then he would talk to me about those, and why they worked for kids and why they didn't work for kids. And you know, to be able to start like that, and then to move from there to Los Angeles and to do things like these car commercials, which are kind of the antithesis of documentaries for kids. But in fact, they're related. And they're related because it, it's still using the craft, whatever that craft is. And in LA, that craft involved huge crews and all kinds of stupid amounts of money and equipment, although the equipment's fun. Um, again, to get a point across. And I know I keep saying that over and over, but that's what you guys have a chance to do. And that's what the folks in these places can teach you. They can teach you how to use this equipment um, to tell whatever story you want. Uh, I look through this and I, there are probably some things I regret, at, at least a couple of my marriages, but I don't think they have anything to do with, <laughs> with this thing. Um, so let's show a couple of these things and then I'll be happy to answer some questions afterwards.
By the way, we teach them to tell stories too. Yeah, <laughs> good, good, good. You have to write scripts and stuff. <laughs> These are all really old, by the way. Well, they don't even work. No, it's our internet, probably. Yeah, buffer problem. Yeah, they worked it. We are buffering. <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit maybe about uh, anything, any procedure or any experience you had making these? Um, well, this is a Wendy's commercial. Um, let's see. We shot most of it in Los Angeles, and then I got to go to Florida to work with... Um, uh, the guy that started Wendy's, you'll see him at the end of the commercial. Um, that was probably one of the most interesting uh, things I've ever done is to meet that guy. This guy had started, that started this thing called Wendy's and just was an incredible guy. Um, but otherwise, I mean, these are just, they're storyboards. You know, when you work as a director and you're doing TV commercials, they hand you a storyboard and you, you're in a room with a whole lot of people and they say, okay, so what's your idea to do this? Um, and then you kind of kind of bounce those ideas back and forth off producers and executive producers and clients and the clients of the clients. Uh, and you hope by the end of it that you come up with something that's just this side of mediocre. Uh, and every so often you actually get to do something that's pretty good. Um, but it's exhausting. It, but it's exhausting. And I will really second, um, uh, yes, what Catherine had to say, sorry, uh, which is, in getting into this business, you need um, one thing you need, humility. And the second thing you need is humility, and the third thing you need is humility. And you really have to be willing um, to, to walk into situations and do exactly what people want you to do, and then some. And you've got to prove yourself over and over and over again. Even at this level where I was working in Los Angeles, every job I went into, I was proving and reproving myself. Um, and it's very important to be, you know, sort of ready, willing, and able to do that. But as Spencer says, it's really exhausting. It's, I don't want to sit here and paint that any of the jobs you get are somehow not really work. They're called work for a reason. Now, they might be sort of interesting work, uh, but they really are work. So if you want to do something like this, please understand that you've got to be ready, willing, and able to work. Um, no, we're it's totally, not going to work. We're